All right. So, um, so we're recording now, and I'm I, I'm here with Haley James Jameson, and uh, we were talking about Rosé, and and I've I, I don't know if I've actually ever heard of Rosé. I think I've seen it like written somewhere, um, but could you could you talk about uh, or, or, or what what exactly is Rosé? Um, it's white wine, but with the peels from the grapes added to it to give it a nice pink hue. So they take uh, they take white grapes or they take like red grapes and squish it's white them. grapes with the, with the, or it's I am not exactly sure exactly how they do it. All I know is it's like it's I mean I like it and this is good quality rosé, but most rosé that people drink is trash. It's like Franzia. <laughs> so, um, so 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 how do you uh, how do you get the um, ha, um, how do you get the good quality rosé instead of uh, Franzia? I have no idea. Okay, okay. I go to a store and I pay ten dollars for a bottle. <laughs> cool. So, um, so, uh, so, so we, we kind of missed your introduction. Um, 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 Haley has um, Haley's written a book that's coming up um, called uh, um, an and Average Life. An Average Life, which is uh, which is an awesome, um, I, ironic, it's an title. ironic title because my life has been anything but average. And uh, so, so your, uh, your book is, I, I, I've read your book and it's really, it's really interesting because it goes from, um, from your childhood up to moving, uh, uh, moving to Portland and, yeah. um, and just a lot of really interesting, um, cool, funny, um, funny stories and, um, and, and cool stuff. So, so, so anyway, that's kind of my introduction to you. Um, Haley, could you um, introduce well, me? You're my cousin, so you know more about me than most people do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, um, so, so, so could you introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Haley James Jameson. I'm a proud trans woman, Nana. So I don't believe in getting my genitals sliced up. I, I don't believe that getting your genitals sliced up because of because you want to fit in with society is what makes you a woman. I don't believe that. So I'm a proud chick with a dick. And that's how it's going to be. Forever. Cool, cool. And um, you, um, you wrote about that in your, um, in your book too. That, um, that's, um, that, uh, that's actually something that I wish your book um, talked a little bit more um, about because I think, um, I think most of it's in the last two um, chapters where you talk about uh, where you talk about being trans and, and transitioning it, and you actually yeah. you, uh, you actually got a documentary made uh, on you, right? Yeah, there's been two documentaries um, made about me. One which will never see the light of day because I lost touch with a professor uh, professor of mine. He was the one that was doing it. The other one, though, people won't probably see it either unless I get mega famous. Even though there's plenty of people who've actually seen me, um, excuse me, um, I asked the guy <clears throat> who made it, Ryan McPherson of Bum Fights Infamy, um, I asked him to take it down because I, I talked, I kind of talked shit about my dad a little bit. And I kind of wish I wouldn't have because things are good between us now. And I don't want him to watch it and feel bad about some shit I said in the past. But honestly, he should get, if he does see it and it does make him feel bad, he should get over it quickly because that's how I felt at that time. You know? And um, and then your, um, that that documentary covered um your your boob job and and, and going going yeah. to, mm -hmm. to get yeah, yeah. so so where uh, where in your life does that documentary um like, like what what segment of your life does that documentary cover i came out as trans and then he ryan wanted to film it and so i i he was a friend i realized now that that documentary was really making fun of me a lot because a lot of the people I thought were my friends actually were secretly fucking jerks and talked lots of shit behind my back about me. Like my two closest, one, two of my closest guy friends, 
I found out actually like hated me and thought I was annoying. And I'm, I'm just like, why dude? Like, I'm so nice to you. Like, what the fuck? Like one of them has since become a, a hanger, a hangers on. I probably shouldn't mention his name, but he's a hanger on to Aaron Paul, who I was friends with, or maybe acquaintances with before this guy was even friends with him. But, um, yeah. Uh, I asked this guy why he did that to me on my documentary because I found his Twitter page and I was like, why'd you do that to me, dude? Like, I loved you, man. And he blocked me because he's a fucking dick. You know who you are. Um, and so what's a... Uh, his, I'm wait, his, his initials are M-B. Just so anyone who knows him knows who the hell I'm talking about. And so what's a, uh, I'm not familiar with the term hang, hangers on. Is that like some movie stars entourage? Or? It's someone who rides the coattails of someone on the way up. Okay. Like then, you, let's say you, you're not famous, but you hang out with a famous person enough that people start to notice you and want to know who you are. And maybe you get opportunities from that. That's a hangers on. Someone who doesn't make it on their own. Cool. So, um, so, so one of the things that I, uh, one of the things that I always um, like about um, like about you, and then um, actually one of my first um, memories of talking to you is when uh, um, is talking to you about movies, because because um, something just really cool um, about you is that you really really love movies to um to a um, um, just, um just to a really really cool extent to where like even um uh, even you talking about a movie that i thought oh that was cool like you can bring out just the uh, the really really awesome um uh, parts of a uh, movie so so you i know keep, um, i keep wanting you to do, um i keep wanting you to you do movie reviews because i would watch every single one of those um, uh -huh. you know i'm not really into movies anymore I'm into television ever since Netflix came out, dude, because for me, I like forming relationships with the characters. Like when I watch Star Trek Discovery, I feel like I'm a part of it. I don't know if that's weird, but I feel like, I feel like in a weird way that they're like a family to me. Like, even though I can't jump in there and be part of Star Trek Discovery, I feel like I'm a part of that family that's watching what happens to the characters vicariously, even though I can't jump in and say, Michael, look out, you know, like you're being followed. And they can't hear me, but like, yeah, I like forming relationships with characters. So I like TV shows a lot more now because they're a lot higher quality TV shows. These days are more like a, um, or more like a really long movie, and I love that. Cool, that's uh, that's awesome. So what um, so so what are the uh, what are the TV shows that you're watching now, and what um, like like uh, you mentioned Discovery? Um, what are uh, what what would you say are maybe like the five best um, TV shows out there or, or or available on Netflix? Oh, Travelers, Travelers. I can't hype that show up enough. It's got Eric McCormick from Will and Grace, who is Will on Will and Grace. They play time travelers and it's fucking nuts, but it's crazy, but it's also good because it's like what real people would do if they were time travelers. Like, But the thing that makes it great is that all the characters truly love each other and they care about each other and they demonstrate that. Whenever some one of them is in distress or gets hurt on this show, the other characters come to the rescue. I've never seen anything like it before. It's phenomenal. And it got canceled after the third season, but they wrapped the story up so well that I was just like, where would they even go after this? Like, it's so perfectly done. Which is kind of what they did with the third season of Star Trek Discovery. I feel like the first three seasons of Discovery were one big long story setup 
to make it more like the original Star Trek or like the next generation. They wanted to establish the characters and their motivations for doing what they were doing. But at the end of season three of Discovery, everything's, there's no more, uh, there's no more huge obstacles in their way so they can start doing what they originally wanted to do in all of the shows, which is explore, seek out strange new worlds, seek out new life and new civilizations and boldly go where no person has gone before. So they finally are able to do that. And in this upcoming fourth season, um, I'm sure it's going to be a lot more episodic and not more whole season arky like the first three seasons have been. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, so, so with travelers, you mentioned that what, what people, what ordinary people would do if they time travel. So what, what do ordinary people do when they time travel? Well, if they're trying to find out who's killing time travelers, and, but in order to do that, they need a base. But in order to get a base, they need money. So they know what horses are going to win and what things are going to happen. So they go around placing bets on all this stuff so they can rack up lots of money real quick. So then they have enough money to establish a base. So then they can have a base, you know what I mean? And then take it from uh -huh. there. Cool. So, um, so, 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 uh, one of the common themes in time, tra time travel is that it, um, like time travel causes a whole bunch of bad effects. Um, d um, does it have any problems with them winning a bunch of horse race money? I mean, apparently the future is terrible and they are traveling back in time to prevent the future from being terrible. Standard uh -huh. fucking time travel horse shit. Cool. So, so, so it sounds like a cool movie. So, um, so, so what, um, so, so Travelers, Discovery, what, uh, what other series do you recommend? The Boys. It's really good. Um, and what, uh, what's, what, what, what's the voice about? The Boys is about oh, modern times right now, but if superheroes were real and how they would react in modern day society. It's very, very extremely violent and graphic and bloody and fucking just glorious. Cool, cool. So, so like, uh, like The Incredibles, if it were like mature or, um, would you would say? So I would say it's kind of a lot like um, if corporate America continued as it is, like capitalism meets. Um, the sensationalism that is uh, her heroes, just in general, the hero culture. So you have superheroes who have these extraordinary powers, but with the marketing machine and the propaganda machine that having a character, there's a character named um, Homelander, is that right? Yeah. Who he's is the Superman. He's like the Superman, but like, how do you corral these ponies once they want to run free? And it's, uh, and a, it's an amazing, it's kind of a little bit of a criticism of like- Putting people on a pedestal. Exactly, like why have heroes if they're just going to be above reproach? Or above the law. Above the law especially. So um, a fantastic show on Amazon, um, very fun, very vulgar, very, um, dark, bloody, very bloody. Bloody, being the most number one thing I'd say about the show. Huh. So, um, so, so, who has better shows, Amazon or Netflix? Um, it just depends on what you like. I think Amazon is taking a lot more risks than Netflix in their original programming. They have to because Netflix stuff is already so out there that Amazon has to be more out there to compensate. Uh, okay, yeah. Um, so I um, I have a I have a Netflix a Netflix subscription, but I've um, I know you do, but I haven't really watched um, very very much of it. I um, I actually I, I moved recently, and it took me like a month or two to hook up um, my um, VPN. my box that has uh, my box that has Netflix. Oh, yeah. I, um, I have Netflix. Um, I have Netflix in Thailand, but it's basically. It's basically only like Am or Netflix originals and then like five movies. Oh, <laughs> tragedy, bro. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, so, um, so, so, so you came, uh, you, you, you came to Thailand. Could you, uh, and, and I think your, your description of Thailand, your experience in Thailand is really interesting. Um, I'm wondering if you can kind of take, um, um, like, like just tell the story of you, of your experience in, in okay. Thailand. And, and because, uh, because I live in Thailand, uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of people, uh, a lot of people come to Thailand um, don't, uh, um, don't, don't really experience real Thailand, but like, um, go to the beach, um, drink, drink a beer on the street and then go home. Um, what? And repeat that. So a lot of people like, um, don't really experience real Thailand. They, they come to Thailand, they, they go to the beach, they drink a beer on the street, um, and then go home. And, and it's interesting, like, you no drink Thai a people. beer on the street legally in Thailand? Uh, no, it's, it, um, it's actually, it's actually illegal. But but a lot of tourists uh, like that's one of the ways you can tell for sure this guy's a tourist is um, is tourists are drinking beer on the street in um, oh right because Americans uh, are fucking like tourists. Uh, yeah yeah like um, like in the tour like in the tourist areas so and so one of the things that's fascinating for me about living in Thailand is like oh, like real Thailand versus the tourist um, tourist Thailand so uh, so so I thought it'd be really interesting to hear like your um, um, okay. So I didn't know anyone over there, but hold on one second. Let me take another hookah hit. Ooh. Wait. It's for the bong, <laughs> Um. Tastes so good, good lord. <clears throat> um, so I touched down in in Thailand because I videotaped the takeoff and the landing, and I was scared because they said that they were going to send someone to the airport to pick me up, but I got in on the wrong side of the airport, and I didn't see anyone, so I was freaked out. I was like, "Holy shit!" They left me, and I talked to people, and like, "Oh." There's another side of the airport. That's where your person must be waiting. So I was like, oh my God. So I ran as quickly as I possibly could. And there he was. And he looked like a crazy, greasy Mexican dude. Like totally scary, man. He was very nice, but he looked like, he looked like what, not to be like cliche or anything, but he looked like someone who would like grab you and shove you in a van and then drive off. But he was cool as fuck. So he's like, and he, my name, they had my name on, on the paper. So I knew it was the right person. So I got in there. He took me to the hotel. I got, I got there and went in and everyone was super nice to me and everything. And my hotel, my hotel room was good. Like I liked it. It was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. And the ho the hospital was like, I don't know, 10 minutes walking distance from where I was at. And uh, so the hotel, um, the hotel to the hospital was about ten minutes away. Yeah. Mhm. Mm yep. Um. Um. So I got my money, walked over there, and I was in the office. Have you ever seen Nip Tuck? Um. No. No, I haven't. Sorry. So Nip Tuck is a Ryan Murphy's first really famous show. It wasn't his first show. I don't think, I'm not sure if it was, I think it might've been his second show, but it was the show that put him on the map. It's about these two plastic surgeons doing fucking bananas surgeries in Miami. But they always ask, they have at the beginning of each episode, it has the person that the episode is based around in the surgeon's office. And it has them talking to the surgeon and the surgeon says to them, Tell us what you don't like about yourself. So there I was in the in the sir in the in the in the waiting room. I was in the waiting room, and um, that was actually one of the funnest experiences of my life, like being over there, because like the desk girl who was talking to me was hot, like really hot, and she was nice to me too. Like, I felt like she was flirting with me, and that was also really nice. I was like, you're cool.
cool. Like, mm. <laughs> I mean, not like anything was hap gonna happen, but like just the way she made me feel was really, really nice. And uh, so I had this $3,000 burning a hole. Like I was like, but I was such an alcoholic or such a drunk back then. I was like, I could still go back without getting a boob job and spend this $3,000 all on alcohol and drink like for a really long time without running out of money. Cause I, it was sad, man. I was to the point where I was like hawking DVDs. My mom bought me for Christmas for drinking money, which is, oh wow, which is uh, the rock bottom point of my life. So, but then I thought if I don't get, I want boobs. Like I was like, I want boobs. I came all the way here to fucking get boobs. I'm going to fucking get boobs. Fuck everyone else. Fuck alcohol. This is what I really want. If I go back there without getting my tits, I'll be a fucking laughing stock and I will probably end up killing myself. So I handed her the three grand and then I had boobs. <laughs> so, um, so, so was this, uh, was this, was this USD? Did you like, did you carry it or, um, cause, cause I don't think you did. Uh, did you carry the 3000 bucks over or? I did. I had it in a roll. So, um, I, so didn't, I didn't trust anyone or anything. That must have been pretty, uh, pretty nerve wracking. Not really. Um, um, they asked me what I was going over there and I just said to eat because that was true. I brought enough money that I could go to a restaurant for every meal. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, so, so, um, so, so you had, um, you had the operation, um, uh, then you got boobs, um, is, mm -hmm. um, and so, so, um, so, so, so they, they, they knock you out, they knock you out for that, right? Yeah. But I told them to film it and they did. And I can't watch that part of the documentary because it's weird seeing myself knocked out and vulnerable and then seeing them slice into me and put my titties in. Cause like there's fat tissue when they slice open my breast, the fat tissue kind of comes out and I can't, it's hard for me to, to see that. I mean, even though it means I had real tits at the time, I'm like, I had real tits. That's crazy. Because <laughs> wow. I was taking, I was taking, well, I was taking hormones illegally um, a little, a couple of months before that. I went to the doctor. I started doing it illegally because I didn't want to have to go to a therapist and have them tell me what they thought I did and didn't need. So I knew how to do it. So I got my hormones from Canada on the internet. And I took them long enough for me to grow a cups. And then I went to a doctor and they were like, and they were like, well, shit, if we don't give them to you, then we're just going to keep doing this illegally. So it's better for us and in a much better conscience to help you than to turn you away because you'll just keep doing it illegally. And then we can't help. And then, and then if something happens to you, it'll be on our conscience now that we know this. Huh. So, um, so, so, so you, you didn't want to go to the doctor at first because like they were going to lecture you, lecture you and say, well, do you, um, no, they make you go through all these psychological tests to see if you really are trans and if it's not just some kind of sexual kink. <laughs> it's fucking stupid. Yeah. And that's, um, so, so that's, that, that's something that's really, weird for me now like like living in thailand where there are so many like um trans people that transgender are transgender like, people are normal over there. they're a normal part of everyday society yeah yeah like like pretty much um i think i, I think probably like half of the 7-elevens and um, um thailand has like tons and tons of 7-elevens so probably oh, probably about, um probably about half of the 7-elevens have at least one uh one trans uh woman working uh working there um so, uh, um, and, and I go to 7-Eleven to buy something like at least like two or three times a day. So, um, um, so. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, I know. I know, dude. Yeah, I, I love. I, I even have, I even have my 7-Eleven, 7-Eleven uh, branded water right here. 
Nice. No, see, the thing is, is I was, I went to a sushi restaurant and I had sushi. And I went to an Italian restaurant and I had spaghetti. And I went to a pizza place and I had pizza. The only thing that measured up to Americans was the pizza. Everything else was just like mediocre because they don't know what they're doing. Uh -huh. And so because of that, I mostly lived off of tuna fish sandwiches from 7-Eleven because I knew what they were just by looking at them. I couldn't read <laughs> anything in the stores. I couldn't read or speak the language. But this bitch knows what a fucking tuna fish sandwich looks like. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I, I, I ate so much tuna fish sandwiches. I cleaned out all the 7-Elevens of tuna fish sandwiches within like a fucking half mile radius. Like I shit you not, dude. So, um, so, so that's interesting. It, it reminds me of something I did when I first moved to Thailand. So, so one of the one of the kind of weird things they have in Thailand is they sell uh, they sell individual slices of buttered bread. Um, weird. So, yeah. So, um, so, so it's like a plastic um, a plastic wrapped individual slice of bread with butter on it. Right. Uh, and and it costs it costs six baht, which is about what like twenty cents or something like that. Right. Um, so, so so I just I I thought that was the uh, just a really really interesting thing. And um, and then also like I noticed like in my office, then people would like give uh, um, give people other like small uh, small small candy gifts. Yeah. So uh, um, so, so so what I did, and I I, I think I tried one. And it was uh, it, it was about like what you expect. Uh, um, the, the butter was a little bit sweet because everything in Thailand is a little bit sweet. But but basically like bread with a tiny um, tiny bit of sweetened or um, how do you say tinily sweetened butter. Um, and uh, um, and so 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 I noticed there were only like a few of these like like two or three. So so I bought them all and then gave them to my coworkers. Um, yeah. And then um, and then the next day they uh, the next day they restocked them. Uh, and I think yeah. there were four, there were four this time. So the next day, I, I I bought four, and then gave them to four more coworkers. Um, and then the next day, they had five. And I thought, wait, uh, wait a minute, are, are are they responding to my, um, are they responding to my um, to the increase in demand? Because if because uh, um, um, like like my job is like warehousing and like like um, purchasing and forecasting and stuff like that. Oh so, shit! I didn't know that. Um, so, well, I do, I do a lot of stuff, but that's, uh, that, that's a big part of my job. So, so I was, uh, I was thinking, uh, I was thinking, oh, this would be really interesting if they're actually, like, if they can actually respond within, uh, within days. So, uh, so, so, so I kept, uh, like, like every day I would go to the store, buy, um, buy all the bread and then give, and then give it to people. And, and like, um, or, or other 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 buttered bread, and finally uh, they, they kept increasing like every single day. And I thought, oh, this is uh, this is weird. This is cool. This is like how how do they do how do they do this? Because uh, um, so so at the very uh, um, the very last day that I went there, um, they yeah. had 15, uh, 15 slices of buttered bread, uh, like 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 fresh that they delivered the night before. So 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 I bought them all, and then I I feel really bad because I um, I I didn't go to that Seven Eleven for like two weeks um, because uh. <laughs> um, so um, so so they probably had to do like a clearance on um, on buttered on buttered bread. Whatever, but, uh, that sounds fucking bitching, dude. If, <laughs> if they sold slices of buttered bread at my convenience store, like at the Seven Eleven, it's literally a block from my building. And they were only like ten cents or twenty cents a slice. I might be inclined to go there and pick some up, especially when I'm high. Oh yeah, yeah. It's because um... I get the munchies and I like cheap, fast, quick shit. Yeah, and and um, so so you you went to Seven Eleven in in Thailand and bought all their tuna fish, right? Yeah. They make a killer. Seven Eleven makes a killer tuna fish sandwich, man. Yeah. So, um, so, so, could you could you describe Seven Elevens in Thailand versus Seven Elevens in the U.S.? Because, um, because I've I've tried to describe it before, clean, but I clean, 
and non-smelly and you don't feel like you're gonna get knifed. <laughs> yeah, that's basically it. Like, they keep their fucking, their building interiors goddamn clean as shit. Like, when I was in the hospital recovering, like, you get a free night hospital stay. I felt like I was in a five-star hotel. And my nurses were so hot, I had to turn away because I blushed just looking at them because I was so attracted to them. I was like, oh. Like, they had blue eyes. Like, you know on Dune? when they take the spice and it turns their eyes that glowy blue, like these Thai women in the hospital, they had their eyes were so blue. They looked like they were on the spice, man. Like, I was like, oh, you guys are so hot. I want to marry you. Like, ah, I'm so attracted to you, but I'm never going to see you again. <clears throat> and they actually were super nice to me and flirted with me. It was crazy, dude. The one that I the, was my nurse, I've had fantasies about going back there and like, like seeing if I could find her and be like, will you marry me? You're so fine. Oh. And I'm not like super into Asian women. I mean, they're beautiful, but it, I've always, Brazilian women's always kind of been my thing. But I mean, I guess hot is hot, man. It doesn't matter who you are. If you're hot, you're hot. And that's just, that's the, the sh you know what I mean? That's, that's just the end of it. Yeah, and, um, and Thai, uh, Thai hospitals are really interesting. Like the first time I ever went to a Thai hospital, I, um, I think I had to get like a, my checkup for the work permit. And, uh -huh. uh, and I'm not used to having, or I'm not used to going to a hospital where like everyone looks like um, supermodels. So, so, so first I thought, oh, well, I'm, I'm in the wrong I'm in the wrong place. It's like a it's like a movie set, not an actual like real hospital. But right. Um, but but yeah, and and I don't know how they get away with it. Like 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 uh, like only hiring beautiful people to work at the hospitals. Like um, like like I don't know if they can say, hey, well you're too ugly, well, you can't work. Here. Like it's fucking uh, crazy. Every <laughs> single person who works anywhere is fucking hot. It's nuts. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, so, so, so in Thailand, um, in Thailand, you were, um, you were mostly recovering. So you didn't, um, you didn't really get around. Um... Yeah, it was hard. Oh, um, and, and, and what, um, what, what, what year, what year was this? 2008, December, 2008. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And I, um, I was 20, 28. I'm 40 now. <laughs> Yeah, I, um, that, that was actually around the time that I first went to Thailand. I think I first went to Thailand in 2009. And, um, and actually in between 2009 and then when I moved here in like around 2015, um, Thailand just changed a whole bunch. Like they, they, they modernized and, and a lot of- Yeah. And, and, and my, uh, my, my experience has been a little bit different um, because pretty much all of the like non-Thai restaurants are really, really good. And, um, and, and I, don't, I, I don't know if it was just because- That is not true, dude. The Thai people do not know how to make fucking spaghetti, man. I was offended by what they put in front of me. It tasted like somebody took a cup of ketchup, added some water and threw it on some noodles. I almost flipped the table, but I didn't want to cause a scene. But I was angry, dude. And I never <laughs> get angry over food. I just felt lied to, I was like, this isn't spaghetti. Like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> yeah, um, actually, that's um, Th Thailand has a really interesting um, version or, or versions of spaghetti, um, and uh, um, so 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 was this uh, was this at a Thai restaurant or in a, at an Italian? No, or was it an Italian restaurant? Uh, and, and, and it's really interesting because a lot of the non-Thai restaurants are owned by foreigners um, from uh, from that place. So so you could have you could have you could have been at a rare like um, Thai style Italian restaurant. I could have gotten up, walked back into the kitchen, and made something a thousand times more awesome <laughs> than what they served me because they didn't know shit about Italian food. 
at an Italian restaurant. So, so do you think it was, um, do you think it was actual ketchup they put in there? I would bet money on it for sure. Uh, um, and so, um, so, so one of the things that I found with with Thailand, uh, especially with, uh, especially with pizza, because because my favorite pizza is pepperoni, um, but in uh, in Thailand or in in Italy they don't actually have pepperoni pizza, and uh, and so one of the things that I, uh, yeah yeah, um, pepperoni pizza is uh, only an American. You've been to Italy? What's no uh, no no, but my uh, my sister has and. And I've noticed, um, and I've noticed that in all of the really authentic Italian restaurants in Thailand, Dude, I don't think Italy, that's true. Because I have sorry to interrupt, but I don't think that's true. Because I've seen hundreds of Italian food videos on the internet of people going over to Italy, and they sure as hell do have pepperoni pizza. <laughs> so I don't know where your sister went. But they do have pepperoni pizza over in Italy. Okay, and then um, and then back to um, back, uh, back to my point, which is that um, it seems like all of the uh, like whether they have uh, pepperoni or not in Italy, all of the uh, really authentic Italian places in Thailand don't have pepperoni pizza. Oh, okay, except for Pizza Hut. Uh, well, Pizza Hut's an American restaurant. Yeah, but they do it right though. Like you go to Pizza Hut, man, and their pizza is fucking bomb. -um. Tastes better than American Pizza Hut, man. Like they really do the fucking job right for sure. Oh, and actually, um, you were uh, you were there in two thousand eight. So 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 something that happened either right around the time you were there or uh, or right afterwards is um, Pizza Hut's uh, Pizza Hut's franchise partner kind of yeah. like rebelled and um, made their own company. Um, so so now, now what was Pizza Hut probably when you were there is actually now called the Pizza Company. I'm sure their pizza tastes diggity dang. So, uh, um, so, uh, so, so yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of the, uh, it's kind of the, or it was the Thai knockoff of Pizza Hut, uh, but, now, but now they've kind of got their own stuff, so. Uh, um, so, so yeah, uh, that's something I really like about, uh, that's something I really like about Thailand is they have like genuine American pizza. They have um, Thai style, uh, Thai style American pizza. They have Thai style Italian pizza. Yeah. They, they yeah. have like real Italian pizza and then everything in between. I just was really disappointed by their sushi quality. Maybe I just went to a sushi chain that just kind of sucked because I'm sure they got good sushi there. Oh yeah, some of the best some of the best sushi I've ever had was in uh, was in a five star hotel in in Bangkok. Um, so uh, so so I think uh, um, and, and there's a there's a lot of sushi. Uh, they actually have these sushi stands with pre made sushi at the night markets. Um, I've never um, I've never got any because I don't know how, like how many hours or days the sushi's been sitting out. Um, so uh, can I ask so, you a question? Yeah. Is it true that one night in Bangkok makes a hard man crumble? <laughs> um, well, well, I'm I'm not necessarily a hard man, so um, so I I don't know. You heard that song though, right? Oh yeah, yeah. But uh, one but but yeah. Night in makes a hard man crumble. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's uh, it's true. All of all of the rumors are true. Oh, so uh, um, so so before before we move on with uh, before we move on from pizza, one of my yeah. most disappointing pizza experiences was um, was I went I went to a restaurant and I ordered pepperoni pizza, uh, um, and um, and my uh, my tie is not great and the uh, and the lady, uh, the lady's um, English probably wasn't great. So I'm sure she, your Thai is really good now. Uh, thanks. Um, so yeah, so, you're uh, gonna be my translator guy when I come over there. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, it'll be awesome, and, and I'll, um, I'll 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 teach you Thai for the first uh, for the first two weeks. We'll be we'll do nothing except for you learning Thai. Um, yeah, I'm cool with that. 
Cool. I should um, probably so start practicing Thai on Duolingo though, just so I can get a jump on it. Oh, and, and, and sadly Duolingo doesn't have Thai yet. What the fuck Duolingo, get on that shit. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> okay, so, so so back to my pepperoni pizza story. So, so, so I order pepperoni pizza and um, and, oh, and and then they bring uh, they, they bring me out this pizza that has absolutely no oh. pepperoni on and a whole bunch of stuff, and then a raw egg on top. Yeah. And um, I've I've kind of talked to you about how like raw food just freaks me out. Like. Oh, um, not me. I love raw food, man. Mm. Um. Um. So so I was just I was just so confused that I was like, how did I order a pepperoni and get this like variety pizza with a raw egg in the middle of it? And, and, and it was like it was like kind of half cooked, but it was still like uh, you you can you could jiggle it. So so just like my absolute my absolute like least favorite pizza that I've ever had in my whole life. Uh, when, when oh, I was yeah, I mean I get that. Raw eggs on pizza should be that's an abomination, bro. <laughs> should not be allowed to exist. So so I was so confused, and I and I I ate I I, I usually eat everything, but I left this like giant circle with the egg. Of the of the uh, um, of the pizza in the middle, yeah. and and, um, and and I grabbed them in Thailand. They don't have a whole bunch of menus, so, so I waited till they went in the back, and I grabbed a menu, and I and I was like, "What the heck did she think I ordered?" And I went I went through all of it, and then I saw that they had a special called Pepe's Pizza with the raw egg in the middle. I was like, "Ah, uh, yeah, there's a huge huge difference between pepperoni and Pepe's Pizza." So moving on from pizza. <laughs> Moving on from pizza, so so you're not um, you're you're not exactly thrilled with uh, with Thai food, right? No. And, tried, and you're a, I've tried to like it numerous times, and it's just not my thing. So you're uh, you're a pretty you're a pretty high level chef, and yeah. uh, and according to some folks, the best uh, the best food experience uh, you provide the best food experience. Uh, I'll let this man speak for on my behalf. The queen knows what she's talking about. I mean, I've upped my game. I mean, my char char charcuterie. My charcuterie board I threw together in like five minutes, and it was mainly for the fact that I knew she was going to be here, they were going to be here, and that if it was a now or never. But it's, it came together. But I mean, it, it's. Why well, I, I am impressed that there's dried strawberries right here, man. Thank you. Mm. But the reality is, is that you know they associate themselves with fine cuisine and the fact that they can do it inexpensively I think speaks more than most understand that it's like it's not just like a only the best of materials go in it's like no 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 you can fucking flub it with a fucking bologna sandwich it's plating it's it's uh it's a dry rub it's these other things that can go into anything minuscule to make it masterful so um when Haley when Haley's talking I just shut up and listen you know when it comes to food when it comes to food don't get me wrong there's still plenty of things that we have a back and forth on but there's gonna be plenty of misunderstanding and agreeable dis disagreement but um yeah they they, they know tell them about the cake I make you for your birthday every so year so for the dude. last two years um they've been making me a German chocolate cake for my birthday and this year it was like a three tier cake and I don't really do the sweets. three layer three layer I guess not tier but three layer cake and it I mean I, I have two slices in the freezer just so I can like look at it just look at it in profile and go god damn that's a beautiful cake you know amen amen, amen. <laughs> Yeah, no, my slogan is you don't have to be rich to eat rich because I fucking hate rich people. So I like to eat like them without spending all the money like them because I'd rather spend my money on having experiences than on eating food. But I eat real good every day, man. I'm talking like steak, salmon, whatever dude because i know how to make it all and it costs me almost nothing so um so how um how do you 
um, how, how do you do that? Do you, do you go to like 10 different grocery stores to find the, the best? Um, sometimes food? yes, sometimes yes, sometimes yes. So, um, so, so what's, um, could you talk more about that? Like how, um, how you can eat inexpensively? I watch a shit. Well, there's two really good cooks on YouTube right now that have started their careers on YouTube. <clears throat> Joshua Wiseman and Babish. He has a show called Binging with Babish. And he does what I've been doing for years, only he decided to do it on YouTube. So I lost, even though I've been doing it for years. But I can make tons of really high, but Joshua Wiseman has this uh, part of his show called But Cheaper, where he makes high quality items for almost nothing, for almost no money, because he knows what he's doing. I've been doing that ever since I was like 19, because I, or, or 21, because I had a drinking problem. And I wanted to spend more money on alcohol. So I had to eat real cheap, but I didn't want to eat poorly. So I learned how to eat really high quality on almost no money. And then I would have a shitload of money left to drink on because alcohol is fucking expensive. Thank God I no longer have that problem. Whew. So how did, how did you get over your alcohol problem? Because most, uh, most people don't just... Um... Because I care what, I care about my reputation and I care about how I come off towards people because you can't make friends and keep people in your life if you're being an asshole and you're wasted and you don't remember. So, uh, so, so what do you say you were an, an, um, an alcoholic or, or just- Oh, no, 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 I've never been an alcoholic. I've been a drunk. There's a difference between an alcoholic is someone that absolutely can't live with alcohol I've put the bottle down for months before. It's not really a big deal to me. My real addiction is television. If I don't have my shows, shit is gonna hit the fan. Okay, so 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 it was more that um, it was more so that drinking is always a social thing for me. My real addiction is people, and it just happens that everyone that I loved drank when they got off work. So that's what I did because I wanted to be around them. But I've grown up a lot and I don't need that shit anymore because I think people who get drunk look like fools <laughs> and act like fools. And I ain't no fool. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a good point. I, um, at one point I really wanted to own a bar, um, but, uh, but then I went to a bar once and I didn't drink. And that was the last night that I wanted to own a bar. Yeah. <laughs> God. Having to listen to people's problems. I hope those bartenders, that's, you know, I used to not tip because I didn't get it. I thought it was dumb because uh, I made a lot more money that because I've always had a regular job. So I just didn't get, I'm like, I, I, I don't get why you guys tip what the bartender picks up a bottle of beer, pops the top and hands it to you and they deserve money for doing that. That's weird. But now I have a job where I have, where I need tips to survive. So I get it. So I always tip 20% or higher whenever I go out. Cause I understand why now. Cause people need quality of life and they can't have that when they're not making enough money. Cool, cool. Oh, um, so so kind of um, go, um, going back um, going back to something you said about um, be, um, being trans. Um, you said like part of the part of the interview process is to figure out are are um, you just have a you just have a fetish or are you really trans? And and that's always that's always something that has really confused me because I, I I don't know if there are actually any people out there. Um, um, like that, like like I know there are lots of people with with like pretty much every, every fetish that there is, but but I don't know if there's a any. Fetish is has to do with someone. A fetish is what someone needs to achieve an orgasm. That's a fetish. I've, I mean, in a way, being trans, 
I all, I'm a transbian. I like other trans women. I'm not really into post-op trans women. I mean, because it's just like, you just took away what made you unique and different. There's millions of cis women. There's millions of women who have vaginas. There is not millions of women who have dicks. And I'm a trans being 100%. I mean, I'm also into cis women, but I like trans women just a little bit more than I like cis women. So why, um, why, do, you like, why do you like trans women? Because I guess the juxtaposition of looking like a woman and having a fucking raging heart on is hot to me because it's not supposed to be able to exist. Trans women are a completely man-made thing. Like we don't exist in nature and that's hot to me. Well, that's a uh, that's a that's an interesting perspective that I haven't um, heard heard before. I mean, I've been accused of being a chaser, but I'm not a chaser because I'm a trans woman myself. I don't want to just fuck a trans woman and then just kick them to the curb and say get out. You know what I mean? Like every trans woman I've ever been with, I've always wanted to be friends with. But sadly, they have not wanted to be friends with me because a lot of the trans women I've been with have been escorts that I've paid for because I don't know. Because every time I meet regular trans women, I get hated on by them. I have big, huge boobs. I look prettier than a lot of them. And I get shit on because of that. And I don't want to get my equipment messed with. And I get shit on because of that. Like, you're not really trans unless you want to get a vagina. I'm like, bullshit, a vagina is not what makes you a woman. Sorry, but that's just not true. Like, it's not what... What's between your legs is not what makes you a woman. It's your attitude about life and how you present yourself to the world is what makes you a woman. Like if you've got long hair and makeup and you walk the walk and you talk the talk, it doesn't fucking matter what's in between your legs. But you got to have boobs, though. I mean, there are some people that say you don't need boobs. So I guess really it comes down to the face and that's like a difficult subject to talk about because that's called passing. Like the more you look like a cis woman, the more you are accepted by society and the more you are likely to get laid and get sex. I mean, nobody honestly, there are very few people I've ever met that say they like bearded ladies. There are people that do like that, but they are uncommon. And I am not attracted to women with facial hair. And that's not a bad thing that I just know what I like. I'm not being sexist or racist or bigot or anything. It's just, that's what my that's what my dick likes. Sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Continue. Yeah. Uh, oh, um, I, um, I was actually hoping you would uh, you would continue because you're on uh, you're on a roll. And, and what do actually, you mean? It's like nothing so, left to say. So, so what does chasing mean? I, I I have never heard that term before. A chaser is a dude that wants to fuck trans women but not date them or have a relationship with them. They're okay. fucking pieces of shit. They want to use a trans woman to get their orgasm and then discard them. Uh, like, okay. like a piece of pornography. Like, you know, you jerk off, you come, you fucking stash the magazine until it's needed again. That's what a chaser is. 
Oh, and they, yeah. give, they give people who actually value and like trans women a really bad name. Because there are men who actually treat trans women with kindness and respect. But they're also, but most men, they like us in secret, but they trash us in public. Because if you like a trans woman, then you're fucking gay. You know what I mean? And you're worse than, than an actual gay person. Because you like an abomination. You know what I mean? Like trans people are abominations in the eyes of society because we're man-made, we're not natural. So people who actually like and respect trans people and want to date and marry them have to keep it a secret because they don't want their lives to be destroyed socially because they don't give a fuck about being really happy. They give a fuck about what society thinks about them. You know, I've been hit on and told this so many times by cis women. They're like, you know, Haley, I would, you're hot and you're funny and you're a blast to hang out with, but I can't date you because what would I tell my friends or my family or my children if they happen to have any? You know, like, I can't out myself as bisexual. And as much as people think being bisexual is cool, because but being bisexual is portrayed as being cool um, in the media when it comes to women. Like, a bisexual woman is fucking awesome. But bisexual men are, like, worse than being gay. Like, people are like, oh, I'm going to come out as bisexual. And I'm like, don't fucking do that. Because you will get shit on and denied a lot more shit, even worse than gay people. And that is a fact. Like, coming out as bisexual is dangerous. I mean, if you can handle it, then by all means do it. But just be prepared to lose a lot of uh, societal cachet, I'd, I'd say. Yeah, and so and so that that makes sense now. Why that kind of uh, uh, that kind of was a, a mean spirited thing to call you a, a chaser, since um, since you're one of the most um, sincere and and loving people that I um, probably know. Thank you. I really appreciate hearing that. I saw me. I really do. Yeah, you know, that's um, one of the reasons. One of the reasons that I've made up my life's goal to be as good of a person as I possibly can is when I die, I want thousands of people showing up at my funeral fucking crying their faces off that I'm not around anymore. That's the kind of impact I want to have on society and on people. Cool. Yeah, and and um, and yeah, that's uh, that's something I've always liked you liked about you is that you're one of the most sincere um, people that just really wants to. Um, I, I know I, what it's like to suffer, and I don't want other people to suffer. I mean, right now. I mean, I'm. I don't talk about this a lot, but when I have the time and when I have the, the food, I usually will make an extra meal and bring it with me on my Grubhub so when I see a homeless person, I can give them some food for free. It's actually good and not trash. So, so how, how, how do you, how do you do that? Cause I have, um, like in Bangkok, I give homeless people um, some money, but I've never actually. Well, I just, I just make, I, when I make quality food, I always make too much. So any, and I don't want to eat the same thing for a bunch of days in a row. So any leftovers I have, I either give to my neighbors or to the homeless. Uh, and, that, uh, and that's, uh, that's, that's interesting. Something that I... But I don't talk about it because you can get in trouble feeding the homeless. Like you can get, I think you can, I've, I've heard numerous times that you can get in trouble if you get caught, like giving homeless people 
really good food because then that gives them the energy to be more obnoxious or whatever. <laughs> I, uh, I don't I care a... though. I don't ever want people to be hungry. When I see people hungry, it hurts me because I know what it's like to go hungry because I've been hungry before. Like three years ago, before I had this Grubhub job, I was almost living out of food boxes exclusively and donations from friends with extra food that they didn't need or want. But now I have a second job, so I'm able to buy whatever groceries I want currently. So that's real good, that's real nice. So, um, so, so, so that's really cool. So, so do you just, you just go up to a homeless person and say, Hey, here's a, um, here's a bag of food or, or. Yeah, no, I usually will see them. I'll be driving up uh, to a stoplight and I'll see them and I'll be like, Hey, are you hungry? And I'll be like, yeah. And I'll be like, I was, uh, excuse me. I'll be like, I was gonna, I made this today. I was gonna give it to the first homeless person that I saw, and you are that person. Here you go, and enjoy. Cool. That's uh, that, uh, that's awesome. So, so has that, has anyone been suspicious? Like, what the heck are you doing? Or no, because I don't do it all. I don't do it often. I want to. I want to do it more often, but I'm secretive about it because I don't want to get fucking ticketed for doing it. If I do it all the time, then homeless people are going to start following me to where I live and shit. Uh -huh. Like there is a homeless shelter two blocks from where I live, and I don't want them knowing where I live because sometimes people smash car windows outside my building, and I don't want that kind of shit to be happening to me or anyone else in my building because I'm giving away good, high-quality free food all the time. Yeah, that's uh, that's a good point. So, so I've got a um, I've got a friend, and she always helps out homeless people. She um, she actually worked for a, a charity where they, they drove around in a van and and like handed out like tooth toothbrushes and stuff. And yeah, she, yeah cool. in like little uh, little packs. Um, so, so 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 like even after she didn't work for that charity, then she would always like help out homeless people. And she was um, she 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 mentioned it uh, like I think she did it a lot more than she talked about it. Um, but. But, so but, but I'm, I'm just asking um, Shepard if there's any more wine. <laughs> but um, and it's just so sweet. Anyways, continue. Sorry. Oh, but 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 I've always been like socially awkward, so so I wasn't really sure how to like. Um, do, do you just like give a toothbrush to a homeless person or or or, or what? And she said, no, 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 no. Um, what what I do is I I walk to I walk to the homeless person, ask them, what do you need, and um and then no. they tell me. Here's um, how you do it. Here's here's how you do it. You walk up to homeless people with a trench coat on, and you have all your goods taped to the side of the inside of the coat, so you can be like, "Hey, I got what you need." And they're like, "What?" And you're like, "Come here." And then you walk into the alley and you open it up and you're like, "Toothbrushes, dental floss, what you need? I got what you need." <laughs> that's not how you do it, but like, that's yeah. a stereotypical joke. You're like a drug dealer, but for actual stuff people need. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so, 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 so I asked her. Um, I asked her. Um, don't don't people just say money? And she said, No, no. Um, everyone like like sometimes they need blankets. Sometimes um, like um, like like just um, and she listed off a bunch of different stuff that homeless people need. So, so I thought that was really cool. And then I. Um, and then I tried it. Um, I, um, I tried it, and the person said, "Oh, I'm I'm, re I'm really cold. I need a blanket." And I was like, "Oh, this is." I, um, so so I went to Walmart, bought him a blanket. And are you wearing yeah. a McDonald's shirt? Oh yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Dude. Okay. Um, I wore um, I wore this McDonald's shirt just because we talked about um, filet fishes um, before. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba, you're loving it. <laughs> um, so 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 you love McDonald's too, right? Eh, it's trash, but every time, but every once in a while, I like trash. I'm not gonna lie. Okay. 
and um, and 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 for me, uh, for me, I'm uh, I'm a little bit different because I see that as like high high quality. Um, oh, McDonald's over in foreign countries is way more awesome than it is over here. <laughs> Dude, Americans suck with the way they feed their people, man. I went over there and it was like gourmet fucking shit over in Thailand, man. Over in Thailand at Burger King. They have chicken cordon bleu sandwiches, man, which is breaded chicken breast with cheese in the middle and ham in between a fucking bun. Why do they not have that over here? Oh yeah, and and the McDonald's the McDonald's in Thailand are interesting because like like young couples will go on a date to McDonald's, and um, you you know in um, you know in the advertisements where they where they, where they show all these like happy young people eating at McDonald's. And then you actually go into McDonald's and you knew, you've never actually seen that scene like in McDonald's. But in um, in Thailand, that's what McDonald's, like, like McDonald's is like the cool place for like oh, young Oh, that's cool. I don't think Thailand has a lot of homeless, gross people hanging out using Wi-Fi in their, in their, <laughs> like in the places where they're supposed to be eating food. Because that's what you, when, before COVID, ugh, I hated going to McDonald's and Burger King because every time you walk in there, there's all these really bad smelling, gross, homeless people and over by the soda machine smells like fucking piss. It was bad, dude, but whatever, man. Yeah, yeah, I, um, I think I can safely say that I haven't seen that um, kind of McDonald's in, in time. Well, you are very lucky. <laughs> so what other stuff did you want to ask me? Um, so, so, so I think we're, um, I think we're about, um, I think we're about out of, out of, out of time, but, um, but could, um, could you, um, could you rank the, um, could you rank the like top McDonald's sandwiches? Um, sure. filet fish number one, all else trash. <laughs> Okay. Nothing uh, is, I mean, don't, I mean, I, I suppose the McDouble is all right. The McDouble is all right. The McRib is absolute repulsive garbage and not even, well, yes, only prisoners should be subjected to the McRib. And I say this because the McRib is back currently right now. And I bought one and it fucking was so repulsive. Like I only ate it because I was hu like hungry. If I had a choice, I wouldn't ever. I will never eat a McRib ever again. It's foul as hell. Wow, and I, I've um, actually um, Thailand doesn't have the McRib. Um, they have a bunch of other pork uh, pork you sandwiches. You are blessed. You are blessed, my cousin. You are blessed. Oh, and I um, I I, I kind of have a story about McDonald's uh, because uh, because I, I I love McDonald's and so. Uh, I, I was vegetarian for four years, and I decided, okay, on my birthday. I know you were. I, I, I'm confused about people who become vegetarian on purpose. <laughs> like I yes. mean, you could call you could call me a vegetarian technically because I don't eat meat very often. I only eat it when I feel like I have a craving for it. It's not like a huge part of my diet. But vegetables are really, really good. It's just that people don't know how to properly cook them, so they get a bad rep. Yeah, that's um, that's a uh, that's a good uh, that's a good point. So how how do you properly cook vegetables? It depends on the vegetable. Like how about broccoli? Roasting mostly is always a good idea. Like where you peel it cut it into small pieces, throw some olive oil, some salt and pepper, some roast, some red pepper flakes, and then roast that shit in the oven until it's got some char on it. And it's turned a bright version of the color it was originally. And then you just let it cool off for a little bit. And then you just eat it. Nothing, nothing more than that, man. Nothing more than that. Cool. Yeah. So, um, oh, so, so, so my uh, so my my McDonald's vegetarian story. So, uh, so so I I was I was vegetarian. I uh, I decided okay, I'm I'm a birthday in in, in like two two or three months. I'm going to stop being vegetarian. So, uh -huh. so so of course I decided okay on on my birthday I'm going to get a McDonald's sandwich. And and I should have got the Big Mac because that's my favorite. Like, like the Big Mac for for me Big Big Mac's number one. 
filet of fish is number two. The McDonald's hamburger, the plain hamburger is number three, which, um, <laughs> which I know you're going to say, oh, well, where, where is your taste? Uh, What's but number three? The, the plain McDonald's hamburger. You know, I like the plain McDonald's cheeseburger on occasion, but only when I'm hungover mostly though. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, oh, oh, so, so in Thailand they have this burger called the pork samurai burger, and it's really interesting because uh -huh. they say uh, they don't even have it in Japan. Um, it's only wow. uh, it, it, it's only in Thailand. Like, like um, Thailand exclusive. Ooh. Yeah, exclusive, exclusive to Thailand. So, so, so I, um, I like I walk by I, I walk by McDonald's all the time. I always see this pork samurai burger. Um, I think I saw some yeah. advertisements and whatever. So. Uh, so, so, so I thought, oh, well, I'll, I'll try this as the first burger, but it was a huge mistake. And the reason it was a huge mistake is because I, um, I, I've been vegetarian for, um, for four months or four, four years, pretty, pretty, uh, um, straight, straight vegetarian. I hadn't eaten it, like no meat in those four years. And I, uh, I bite into the McDonald's, um, samurai burger and, and, you know, you know, McDonald's, it's like, uh, like, like, like the Big Mac has beef on it, or, or like what they claim is beef, but it doesn't actually taste like beef. So, uh, so, so I was thinking, oh, McDonald's is a nice, gentle introduction uh, because it's going to taste good, but it's not actually going to taste like meat. Uh. So, but, but with the Samurai Burger, it was like I was eating. Um, it, it, it's basically a pork burger, like, like real, uh, real, genuine pork that tastes like pork. And so I felt like I went from like nothing, uh, like instead of the nice gradual step, I went to just like eating, a, um, like taking a bite out of a pig is what, uh, like, like that's what it felt like, uh, like emotionally. You mean you felt like you got punched in the face by pork? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I got punched in the face by real pork, not by, not by whatever it is that they put in between the... Um, like, you went like this. <sighs> <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's uh, that. Uh, that's exactly that's exactly how um, how it felt. We all so, have that experience from time to time. Yeah. So 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 actually, I uh, like, like like I had um, I had reasons, and like the longer I was vegetarian, the more reasons that I had. And actually, one one guy at work, he he jokes about well, Joseph, like ask Joseph why he's vegetarian. He'll tell you something different um, than what he said last week, which is different right. from what he said before, and that kind of thing. So, 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 yeah, I think I think the reason I did it was just to see if I could, um, and then we do a lot of things just to see if we can. Yeah, yeah, um, and um, so, so, so that's that was what makes life worth living. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that so so that's probably like like all of the all of the various things that I. Uh, that I said over the years, it basically boils down to that, uh, that being the, that being the thing. Cool. So, um, so, so, so that's cool that you're, uh, that you only eat meat when you like get a craving for it. Cause, uh, cause that's probably a way like more balanced way of looking at it. Yeah. I don't force feed myself anything I don't want. I usually seek stuff out if I want it. I mean, if I could have a choice, if I could just have ahi tuna whenever I want it, but I can't because it's fucking so expensive, I can eat an ahi tuna steak in like five minutes, and that steak just costs like 17 bucks. So if I had the money, if I won the lottery, I would only have a fridge full of ahi tuna steaks, dude. <laughs> That, is, that would uh, be like my fantasy, like just fish, like just all kinds of fish. Mm. Can think of is, nothing better than that. That is that is that is awesome. Yeah, so I love um, fish. So so we'll have to uh, while you're uh, while you're in Thailand, we'll have to go to a high end seafood seafood buffet that has. Um, but, yeah, dude, I would love that. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, they have they, they have a lot of really like cheap buffets that are like I think 199 baht is the cheapest, which is about six bucks. Um, oh and then, damn! Um, and that's what that's what like regular Thai people go to. Uh, they they usually have like a grill and and you kind of grill your own like, like, like 
you roll up into a crowd of Thai people and you're like, fuck, dude, I just spent 300 baht on dinner tonight. And they're like, oh my God, you're a high rolling motherfucker. <laughs> but you just only spent $10 American. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's that um, tragic, man. That's fucking tragic is what that is. Yeah, uh, that's uh, like my uh, like my uh, my wallet because of the denomination. It makes it look like uh, like, like I'm a high roller. Yeah, yeah it makes you look like uh, you're fucking loaded as shit. Baht here, fifty baht here, five hundred baht here, hundred baht here. Uh, yeah. Um, God, I feel I feel sad now. <laughs> Man, the Thai people are really getting ripped off. That sucks. Like, they should be making more money. That's a tragedy. I'm not wrong. Hello? The connection's broken. What? <laughs> Is it going to unfreeze? One can hold. <laughs> Shit. I thought he was just like. Oh, get... I think he dropped. Wait, you're still being recorded. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still being recorded. Looks like it. Um, well, I guess that was a... Uh, Maybe you should, you should sing something. Put on your favorite song and just do a fucking karaoke session. Real yeah, quick. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to text him real quick and say, oh, his power went out. Oh, wow. What? All right, well, give, give, give. That's all, folks. Did